Hey, this is Dan Benson. Welcome back. Today we're going to learn about log analysis in Mission Planner. I think you're going to enjoy this video. It's possible to record various parameters when you use the ArduPilot software. You can choose the elements you record. This is much like the black boxes you hear about in the commercial airliners. There are two types of logs, data flash log and telemetry logs. Telemetry logs are recorded on your computer if you have telemetry. The data flash log is recorded on your flight controller. Some flight controllers record the logs to internal memory and others require a removable SD card. In this video, we're going to talk about the data flash logs. Let's get started. First, open Mission Planner. Then make sure the Flight Data tab is selected. About a third of the way down the left side of the page, you will find Data Flash Logs. Click that tab. You can download the data flash log to your computer through a USB cable. Click Download Data Flash Log via Mavlink. Then choose which log you want to download and where you want to save it. Once these are downloaded, you won't need a connection to your flight controller anymore. You can let Mission Planner analyze the log for you. To do this, click Auto Analysis. The File Explorer lets you search for the file you want to analyze. You can choose the bin or log file. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. The log format is a comma delimited spreadsheet type of format, but they both have the same information. After a while, the automatic analysis completes and you'll be given a summary of the findings. But the most powerful option is review a log. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Click that tab, then find the file you want to review. Files are listed by the recorded time and date. For this example, I'm going to open a crash that happened 2020 dash 03-22 at 11-00-48 a.m. Clicking this will bring up the log browser. The map shows the flight path. In this flight, I took off, turned, switched to cruise mode, turned right, switched to return to home. I let the plane make a couple of clockwise turns around round home, then I switched to cruise mode. While in cruise mode, I turned left and suddenly realized that I wasn't high enough to clear the trees. So I switched to fly-by-wire A, fully advanced the throttle, pulled back on the elevator, stalled, and crashed. The plane stayed in the tree for about an hour while I searched for it. Once I located the plane, I applied power and was able to free it. It fell to the ground without any damage. A simple matter of pilot error, you would say. I just stalled it, right? Well, let's see what we can learn by analyzing the flight log. The far right column lets you choose what you want to graph. Let's Click the plus beside the AETR and click THR for throttle. Now the value graph has something to look at. The top line of the value graph describes the parameter that we're graphing. The very bottom of the graph gives us some options to display. We can choose to show the flight path on a Google map. We can show the time of day. We can view the data table with the actual numbers. 
Next box allows us to compare two different values. We can choose to display the flight mode, display errors, display messages and events. These are shown as labels on the bottom of the graph and in a bar on the second line of the display. The color of the bar changes depends upon what flight mode you're in. For example, manual mode is pink. Left axis of the value graph will change depending upon what you're plotting. Here we're displaying throttle values so the axis goes to from 0 to 120 percent. If you're displaying PWM values the axis will go from a thousand to two thousand or so. And if you're graphing values that have both units, the graph axis adjusts accordingly, showing values from 0 to 2,000. In that situation, the small numbers will be graphed way at the bottom of the graph. We can enlarge the area we want to examine by dragging around the part of the graph we want to choose. Left click and hold while dragging a box around the part of the graph we want to select. You'll see a dotted box on the top left hand side of the graph. This will indicate that you're selecting an area to enlarge, but the dotted box doesn't really correspond to the area you're selecting. To get back to the original zoom level, right click. Now here's a really cool feature. Double click a part of the graph and the pin on the map will show you where you were at that time. Isn't that cool? We'll clear the graph now by unclicking the throttle box on the right column. Now let's look at the actual numbers the graph was based on. To get there, click Data Table. And you'll see there are thousands of numbers for each flight. The first couple of hundreds of rows has to do with housekeeping and how the information is formatted. Then we come to the actual numbers. The column header names change depending upon the row you selected. For example, let's find a line that says AETR. You'll notice that the column headings now read AIL, ELF, throttle, rudder, etc. Click on a box that we're interested in, and then you can click graph left or graph to right doesn't seem to make much difference to show that information on the graph. Two things will happen. You'll see a graph of that item and a tick in the box on the item of the right hand column you're graphing. To clear the item from the graph just untick that item. If you want to filter what the data table is showing Click any column header. There you'll be presented with a drop down box which has all the possibilities. Click what you want to see. If you want to undo the filter, click a column header and click cancel. To change items to graph, you might have to right click the item to restore the default display. Now, here's another cool thing double click a row and the pin on the map will change to where you were at that time. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's figure out what happened to cause our crash. Let's graph our throttle to confirm we were producing power. Looking at the graph, we see that the throttle values range from 0 to 100%. But where were we in our flight? Remember, I flew crashed, then had to find the plane, applied power in the tree, and finally flew the plane out of the tree. Let's choose a place on the value graph to see if we can narrow things down a little bit on our flight path. I will double click at 1120. I already know that I took off at 11, so I'm probably stuck in the tree by then. But by double clicking and looking at the map, I can see I'm already in the tree. Let's double click somewhere in the first series of squiggles. By doing so, we can see that we haven't landed in the tree 
yet. So that's the area we're interested in. Let's enlarge that area by left click and hold to draw a square around the area we're interested in. Now we can see the throttle was at 100% for takeoff, then went up and down around 50% until we came to a time when it drops abruptly to zero. Let's see where we were by double clicking at that spike just before it dropped to zero. If we enlarge the map, we can see that we haven't landed in the tree yet. This is the time when the throttle should have been 100% to clear the trees. What happened? Remember I changed the mode from cruise to fly by WA just before the crash in an attempt to outclimb the trees? Let's look at the modes. From the top pink area, we see where we were in cruise mode and then when we changed to fly by WA. So why would the throttle cut off instead of producing full power? Let's look at the signals from our transmitter and from the flight controller to the ESC. RCN channel 3 is our throttle channel and RC out is channel 1 on our flight controller. So let's graph those. We have to resize the graph. Right click and reset the scale to default. And now we see something interesting. At the beginning of the flight, RC in and RC out parallel each other. But suddenly the RC in falls to a PWM of 1000, which is throttle cutoff. How can that be? How can the plane continue to fly if the RC in is at throttle cutoff? Well, remember that in cruise and return to land, the autopilot controls the throttle. So, it looks like I threw the throttle cutoff switch by mistake when I switched to cruise the first time. The transmitter was commanding a throttle of zero, but cruise or return to land overrode that setting. It wasn't until I switched from cruise to FBWA just before the crash that the flight controller saw a throttle request of zero and cut the power. And that's how I ended up a tree. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the power of log analysis in this video. Thanks for watching.